Hey everybody, welcome to the Dancing Sober Podcast. I'm glad that you're back with us and you know what? It's the holiday season. So, yep, I'm calling it. It's the holiday season. So don't forget to go to rafa.la slash shop to get some of these cool shirts that I got going on over there. Every shirt that you buy or every product that you buy, these mugs um, are also on the website. Everything gets the podcast $10. So whatever it costs, it's, it all goes to the manufacturers, except we get $10 from everything you buy. So um, please support through that. You can also donate through Venmo, or you can um, hit me up if you want to get some of this beautiful coffee. Speaking of the coffee, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, a big shout out to Picaresca Cafe. Picaresca Cafe is a little coffee shop out there on Soda Street, right by Olympic, in front of La Plaza del Sol, inside of an indoor mall. I got to get their address so I could tell you the address, but find them on Instagram at Picaresca Cafe. Um, really good stuff. They roll star beans. When you buy a bag of beans from me, don't forget you're supporting not just Picaresca Barra, but also this podcast. And of course, I want to give a shout out to Espacio 1839 for allowing us to have this space here. They are our studio sponsor, so they supply us with this space and it's the holiday season of course they are also available online at espacio1839.com or you could come into the store they're open from friday through sunday only during um they might open more days during the holidays i don't know but that's um where they're at you could also find them on instagram at espacio1839 so let's just get into it without further to do today's guest artist is sergio turan Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dancing Sober Podcast. We are here today with our guest, painter, artist, Sergio Terran. Do you pronounce it that way or do you pronounce it Sergio Terran? Uh, I say Sergio Terran, but you know, the iterations of, of yeah. it have e evolved being uh, yeah, American. Yeah, so I, I know. It's never a huge people say Turan. I have to say Turan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like it's a, <laughs> like I were in Vietnam together. Turan. Earlier, I was saying your name, and I was saying Sergio Teran. So it was like the first name was <laughs> Americanized, but then mm -hmm. the last name was like you had to throw that hard R in there. My, you know, my my cousins from Mexico, uh, the ones that, the ones that the, there's cousins who never come to the states and there's cousins who come to the states and they yeah. get a little bit of a vibe and they'll call me serge serge because my friends call me serge <laughs> serge and uh but they call me sergio but, yeah. you know like like my mom you know my mom would call me sergio sergio right yeah yeah, yeah. Was, when she was mad right sergio. <laughs> uh but yeah so S serge, serge. Is, is is what my friends call me and then yeah serge it, it doesn't yeah, yeah. Ser Sergey is the one that I'm getting used to. With oh the, shit! The, the Russians or oh really? Who are yeah, from, yeah. What? I get I get Rafe. 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 Yeah, that's when that's uh, the European. When style people forget my name, I'm yeah. always or Rafi, Caesar. Yeah. Caesar. If they forget my name, they'll be like Caesar, right? Oh. <laughs> Every single time. So I just like my. It's like my. Uh, mm. My doppelganger is yeah, Caesar. Your, your pseudonym. Yeah. My, <laughs> yeah. When I when I was younger and I would get pulled over and you know because back then you could give a fake name if you're not carrying your ID I used to give Raúl Cardona, which is close to my name. <laughs> but then one day I did meet a Raúl Cardona and I was like, bro, I'm sorry, I've been using your name. I, I hope. Uh, the, well, I, I you know, listen, man. I oh, I wanted to say thanks for having me on. Oh, first of all, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Happy to have. And I'm a big fan. I think you know that. And Likewise. I'm, and I'm a fan of the podcast, and I try to catch it catch uh catch it whenever i can what i love about podcasts is is that i can see them when you know i can come back to them right and so uh yeah i, I just um I, i'm really happy to be a part of the uh yeah i i feel like it's a, it's kind of like you know it's, it's, you you, you the archive <laughs> yeah you cho but you choose like people to talk to and i was like eh, you know because I, I think i'm 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 my worst critic always uh, and you know you choose people to talk to, and I was like, oh, you know, this is I got this is this is this is how I am. I got to tell myself like, oh, that's good, man. That you, yeah. right? I could be the one that's like at my own show like this, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> fuck, this suck, right? You know, yeah, and it's yeah. just uh, it's just part of my. But, but you know, no, I'm I'm really excited because, uh, yeah, I've I've really enjoyed the. The thing uh, is, I've had you on the list for a long time, because I, I mentioned it to you, yeah, months ago. But what happens is, let's say. 
in one month I go out a lot and I see a lot of people and I'm like, I want to get you on, I want to get you on. So then I have a list of like 20 to 30 people, but then I could only do one a week. Yeah. <laughs> so, so 20 to 30 weeks is a long time. You know, it takes, I still have a list that I haven't caught up to and I still keep bumping into people that um, I want to get on. But yeah, you've definitely been on the list, you know, from the get. I appreciate get. it, man. And, and I'm really glad to have you here. We're going to get back into that a little bit, but let's start um, like with a little bit about where you grew up and, you know, um, stories. Really glad to be a part of the podcast. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. So I grew up in uh, Montebello, uh, East Los Angeles. I say Montebello, East LA, Commerce, because that's where I hung out, right? Mm-hmm. I was always mm-hmm. occupying, but we, we grew we. When I was really young, we were in East L.A., and then we moved to Montebello is the conversation we're having, right? We, yeah. we went, we made it big and went <laughs> made to it big Montebello. And Montebello. Uh, Somebody got a good paying job that was steady. <laughs> or my mom could, just had, my mom was just. And actually, back then, you could afford mortgages. So it was yeah, well, no, there's no, we didn't own a house. We, oh, okay. we rented, but she was his presence of mind to be. We were just adjacent to to uh, violence and stuff mm. like that. And I, I think that was. What, what area of Montebello? Um, it was South Montebello in the beginning, and then we, we moved around going slightly more north. Never really made it across mm. Beverly Boulevard, and mm. I think that that's where the – when we grew up, the, 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 the rich people were yeah. up <laughs> on the hill of Montebello, right? Uh, they owned houses. That's in the right, uh, up there where the but, oil uh, is. <laughs> yeah, I always say, um, you know, because – and East L.A. was across, the, across Whittier. Mm. Where I was, right? So you, you, and so my friend was in East LA, and I was like, I was like "What do you mean? Uh, he's like, How come your address is says East LA, and where it's like, you know, that's funny, or Los Angeles, something like that." Um, but you know, we, I, I, we were always, I'd skate to my friend's house in Commerce, yeah. skate to my friend's house. Now, skating was a big part of you growing up too, right? Yeah, and and, and uh, as a kid, and, and and I skated in the '80s, just to yeah. put, put it into context. So shaped boards, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, really getting chased, really, really hated for for uh, just you know when you're in somebody's territory, they don't like that. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And and so and also the boards looked fancy as right. Yeah. Looked really fancy. So uh, we got a couple of times we got our boards stolen. Oh, or some by some uh, at the in the '80s. What were they? They they're uh, we called them stoners, which were just... Back then, were you like a skater skater? Did you do yeah, tricks? Because I, I had a skateboard, but I would never consider myself a skater. Tricks. We would use our skateboards to get to the movies. No, tricks know, proper. Walls, Damn. ramps. Nice, uh, nice, nice. You know, like tear up your ankle, tear up, uh, yeah. tore up my knee, my ankle, fell off of a 15-foot wall. <laughs> uh, just those kinds of injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, knocked, knocked myself out. I was always jealous of all that cool stuff you know uh and and where i grew up in in montebello in montebello i always talk about it is somebody's gonna be offended from montebello but it's it's tumbleweeds and mm. auto auto stores you know auto yeah, shops yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, the, certain areas of it yeah yeah so so there's you know there's you mean like going down like washington and maple area i was off of whittier and so there's a lot of parking lots to skate and i was we lived uh, in the apartment complex that we grew up in um, when I skated, there was uh, it was an alleyway, which was mm. what was so scary about Richard Ramirez, because it was there's no fence, right? It's just a duplex. It's a, this is the 80s. You gotta yeah, understand so that. So it's, and I'm 12. This is like the first time people start fearing. Oh, big time. Yeah, like this didn't. Ex- we would we would literally come home from school and play in the streets, and then the lights came on, the street lights, and you came home 9 p.m. Fucking late for kids. Oh, he's the boogeyman. He's the boogeyman. Before Richard Ramirez, we were allowed to do that. Then afterwards is when people started guarding their children a little more and, like, not letting people out at night. You know, I think about – did you you catch the documentary? No, I haven't seen it because I'm Uh, scared. Yeah. Yeah. No, it it really – and you're like, no. Like, you're you're, – and I was trying to pinpoint people. I was like, do I know that spot, like, in East L.A.? I saw stuff way before, but the the new documentary I haven't seen yet. But, again, to put it in the context is the – the mythology is what made it scary, and you know, as far as uh, uh, taking lives or, 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 or making lives, you know, Jesus Christ is the only other yeah. <laughs> figure that can then still be. You know, there's a mythology with not knowing, and during the '80s, there's no cell phones, there's no yeah. internet, so that fool can yeah, you just heard those. He can just literally jump here. into a crowd and possibly disappear if you didn't know him. So. 
that mythology of of the murders and where they're where it were they were just even bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the news amplifies that stuff. Right? Yeah, of course. So it was, uh, <laughs> but we 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 were right. Uh, it was the complex, and so the back door was was right there, and it was the alleyway and auto shops. And what I was going to connect it to skating is that there was always a greasy parking lot uh, to skate because okay. you can slide, and the, then they often had metal parking. They didn't have necessarily parking blocks. This one particular place uh, had a metal a, rail. A metal rail. So we'd hit that. <clears throat> nice. nice. Um, but if you, you know, you, I, you'd, and, and you'd look for those places in different areas. And when you went to a different neighborhood, you know how that yeah. goes. <laughs> so they fuck with you, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, I never got fucked with by other skaters. But, I mean, if I did walk into the wrong neighborhood, there were, you know, back in the days, if you would walk around, there would be, like, giant groups of gangsters mm-hmm. like in any given corner when you if you just turn a corner you're like holy shit i gotta yeah. walk through this now and you just cross your fingers and pray that nobody like yeah says anything to you because anybody could spark it up and <clears throat> it'll go off Mo- and the most of the people that i hung out with weren't combative in any way yeah anymore, yeah you know? but it's just sort of like that adolescence yeah. yeah if you see a group of of you know like gangsters or you know youngsters which is what they really were yeah and they, they see that you're what we all were <laughs> they mess with you but this is the other thing is that you know with a skateboard and the skaters now you see them it becomes a part of your body man like yeah. you can i, I got it there's some hairy situations i got away from and i could you know i could at the time i could skate and pop that board up in a second <sighs> jump a wall running, yeah. and then get back on the board or you know I can I can run you know you run you 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 know it's a sprint and then jump on the board and those fools if those are f- fools are right behind you you just shoot the board back to them right and it hits the shins it's not uh, you know Ouch. so you know you get, it's like yeah. very yeah it I, becomes a part of your, your that reminds me of a couple spills that I took where <laughs> running and I would fall but being young like I would roll and get back up and keep running mm-hmm. I don't think I can do that anymore no no <laughs> I nah, would probably just, just hit. And that would be it. That, I wouldn't be able you to hear get pops up. and you just yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, ooh, uh, it yeah, doesn't work yeah. that way anymore, man. But yeah. yeah, no, skating was uh, definitely a part of uh, how I navigated, how uh, art culture yeah, sort yeah. of uh, uh, influenced um, the visual visual culture. Yeah, it's definitely a visual culture. Like everything about oh, it. Yeah. I mean, the 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 teeth, yeah. the the shoes, the boards specifically. And there was like you know the Latino s- skaters. There's, yeah, there's, there's a ton. It, it's Typically, I think skaters who are very low to the ground are mm. they have a, a, you know, a, what, what do they call it? A, uh, it's good balance, right? Center of gravity. Center of gravity, right? So, Asians and Latinos are, yeah. are off. The, yeah, like so. You think of a Caballero and mm-hmm. for that time. Uh, but Mark Gonzalez was from Southgate originally. Yeah. But Mark Gonzalez is also yeah. I, I think this is a, sort of the the first sort of influence, like he was Latino, he was also kind of an artist, he had this sort of artist spirit, he mm. right all over his board, and mm. and the way he did, you know, if he did tricks, they were just sort of really unconventional. He had his own style, oh, which yeah. is what, I mean, would make some, because a lot of people can do the trick, but yeah, it's that swag that you have, or that, that way that you landed, and you know. And it's the lifestyle, right? Like, I'm, yeah. <clears throat> but so, but how, did, how did then art become a part of your life? How, how early was that? I, I I think we my brother and I uh, I have a, I have an older brother but we've always drawn we always loved animation right what mm. heavy metal eighties heavy yeah, metal yeah. animation or any of course you're drawing any, the S with the little <laughs> I I you know and I used to in the spots where I lived there was a Johnson's Market and that's where I would get all of my that was my uh, Instagram of the time right so I'd go and, yeah. and haunt the the magazine so you get Mad Magazine oh, yeah. right heavy <clears> metal. Um, any of the rock magazines or anything that had it's Madden magazine was our TikTok, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's where you would get your jokes and memes yeah. and pass them around. Yeah, and so there was, you know, I, I think that 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 kind of like comics and magazines and skateboard, um, yeah, is is where the sort of visual, you know, decorative uh, look of of uh, art was for sure in this, the skateboard because it was all about. It was lifestyle with them, right? And their skateboards were signature boards, so they'd have a graphic that was a symbol of who they were, and that was always sort of, like, inspiring. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also talking about screen printing, right? 
So, so skateboards in that time oh, yeah, it's screen, screen printed. printed yeah. So <laughs> that graphic element in three layers or in three colors yeah. is also sort of yeah. instinctual. They're, they're still screen printed, aren't they? I mean, there's some that, are, that have that wrap. Well, they're, they're t from what I understand, wrap. it's uh, heat, heat transfer heat now trans because it, it, manufacturing is Just a lot so easy, faster. Yeah. Um, for, uh, f yeah, but the graphics, the screen printed graphics, certain companies still do it, like with Santa Cruz. They screen print the heat transfer that, and then they transfer there's machines the that, yeah. that that screen print uh the heat transfer yeah. and then they send those out and manufacture them but you don't get any of the flaws of screen printing on a yeah, con yeah. concave board yeah, or yeah, shape yeah. you know so that uh quality is 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 not available also you can heat transfer across an entire deck that's yeah. got all these we you know weird shapes or and uh the weirder the shape the harder it is to get a squeegee in yeah. there right some people mastered it but um, they still make additions, so they'll do like you know a 500 screened yeah. buy, and that you know that's how they're selling yeah. it for 300 bucks. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think it depends on who who it is or yeah, yeah. how it's signed. But but let's get into you drawing. So you drawing with your brother was that like a thing growing up that you guys just picked up and never stopped? Is is he still drawing? Nah, no, my brother's not drawing, but my brother uh, as a kid uh, in the back. Do you remember the back of the magazines where you like can draw? If you draw, draw turtle, copy this, co copy the turtle, and then yeah, send this like out. Fucking uh, Bobby from La Bamba. Bob. Yeah, cut, cut it out. Exactly, yeah. cut it out. But um, and uh, Bobby from La Bamba, right? But you you do that, and and the and so basically, it's a college online. Okay, the course, yeah. Not online. <laughs> mail, mail. mail order, that's yeah. our uh, that's our online. <laughs> the mail is our online as our internet. It was a so. What are they, a correspondence course. That's yeah, what they're and they're all they were all um, East Coast illustration illustrators. Wow. So um, when we and so he would get something in the mail. So he'd get like some sort of assignment, and uh, he'd so he my mom would have to pay for the books yeah. and all that stuff. Right? <laughs> of course. But he was good enough to do it. It was really actually quite good, and uh, so he, he completed a course through that mail. And looking back, I forget. I forget the illustrators' names, but they're pretty significant in the in as a New Yorker magazines mm. or um, uh, GQ magazines of the time yeah, in yeah. the '80s. They they were doing all the spot illustration, all the work for them, and so they were also people who basically did this program for people across the country. Nice. But he did that, and that was very in, uh, yeah. Where it's like, whoa, that's inspiring to you. Yeah, right. So did you? Read the books along with him or anything like uh, that? Nah. No, I didn't. I flipped through the books. I didn't read it yeah. that much. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he, um, I think he he sort of owned that. Yeah. He eventually kind of, like, abandoned it. And uh, the books got, you know, put away. And then I recently found some of the those. They're, like, thin catalog books. True. Pretty interesting, man. Cool. Just You know, they're just technical. Yeah, 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 technical stuff. I don't think I have any of his like sketches, and they'd be like, "Do copy this or copy that, and do, you know, you're doing, yeah, like, some sort of like a lot of repetitive stuff." So. Yeah, principles of drawing and I, and, and that. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, and I would draw on, on my board, script mm -hmm. tape. I draw on, on, on in sketchbooks or in leaflet papers. Um, yeah, I, I don't. The, I think the most sophisticated idea of drawing came through. Uh, seeing that the school the actual school and and just seeing graphics on 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 skateboards or in surfboards or yeah. surf culture is also pretty but, big so you guys are drawing a lot and and how did you then decide or how did it get to the point where you're like oh this is something i can do east la college so <laughs> <laughs> high school Straight. of course right like high school you take that art class and you're like oh this is cool this is fun yeah um and uh, yeah, and of course, this is back in the days where I'm sure your parents weren't telling you, Mijo, you could be an artist one day. My, uh, we were raised by uh, a single mom, and and she was, uh, she's, you know, she was a traviesa, man. She <laughs> she was she she was never one to she wasn't a traviesa. She she was never one to no tell it like it is. <laughs> oh, no, well, she she left at 17 from home, right? And okay. she never came she back. Ran away from her sort house. of thing. So yeah. she's she uh, you know like whatever it is you wanted to do, she always supported that. Mm. She's ne she never said no. My brother was down on that that I was oh, going to be cool. an artist. He's like, what do you? It's too it's too you know there's too much competition. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, <laughs> well, whatever, who cares, you know? But um. 
He's actually he does uh, finance for uh, the School of Architecture at USC. Oh, true. So he turned into a he, he's a finance guy, the numbers guy, yeah, the numbers guy. That's tough. You know, uh, and and here's a my my dad uh, uh, when we were younger owned a catering truck, mm. and so my brother and my my dad's spelling wasn't so good, so my brother at a uh, at a young age would do all the writing for him, and he would do all the all the math for him yeah. as well. So <clears throat> and. Uh, he he attests that to going like that's why I sort of like was interested in numbers and math. He likes math, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so then you in high school started doing yeah more art and I was always you know it was always novel you know like uh, in high school I I stopped skateboarding. Yeah. Right. I sort of put it away or gave away. I I, I really re- regret it, but I gave away boards yeah. that that I I had. I always would uh, um, draw on the on the front side on the grip tape, you know. So nowadays, like, oh man, I wish I had that wish damn had board. Those. But uh, you know, just sort of like letting go of it, and you know, entering high school and and uh, giving it up. But in high school, I did take art classes because it was, uh, you know, it's like speaking Spanish. It's sort of very familiar, and and uh, I could already draw, and so it, you know, it was it was very easy to to excel. Um, and you know, it was enjoyable, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think most people grow up with, with, uh, a lot of, uh, pressure from family or, or, uh, uh, you know, finances. Mm. And so the things like that were always a, a nice break mm. from the, the reality of, of, and you were already like a skater kid. So you already had like the counterculture kind of against the man kind of vibe. I think that was really important, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I think knowing skateboarding, knowing uh, uh, punk rock, uh, uh, and and uh, it's also very sort of makeshift, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna fucking put it together. Yeah, DIY, very yeah. DIY. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, it's accessible. Yeah. You know, the accessibility of it uh, made things accessible. When uh, it's like, oh, I, I, you know, I can do that. Why yeah. can't I do that? I'm like, let's, let me give a shot. And that, t- till today, I think that, that so that's when you got to Elac. Did you start with art classes or? Yeah. Well, I was an art, you know, I was an art major. I, I checked in as an art major, right? As a fine artist. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I, you already had a pretty good, I mean, idea of what you were going to do. I've always, I'm that type of person where it's like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I know what he's going to bother me. Yeah. I was, I, and I admit. Do you remember I, how that happened or when that happened? Can you, can you? As, I think as a skater. Yeah. I, I don't think I, I never I never not wanted to continue to. to what kind of art. things did you used to draw back then? And which, which back as then? A, as a skater, as a skater, it was just it was mostly copying, sort of like emulating some of the stickers or yeah. some of the uh, graphics. Um, it was yeah, I I I always loved Iron Maiden <laughs> covers. <laughs> Trying to draw Eddie. That's badass. Yeah. Um, Mad, Ma- you know, just Mad Magazine. You know, Mad Magazine had this sort of chaos or this like. Uh, uh, complexity of like figures like throughout yeah. right and so just sort of drawing caricatures just filling just up a space. everybody in that magazine felt like an outsider <laughs> yeah something you know filling up peachy folders dude yeah, again yeah. that's another thing i wish i had my peachy folders that you know yeah, yeah, you would spend <laughs> hours on you know with paint markers too because we used paint markers to draw on the grip tape because they, okay. they take and then eventually it's like you know you have this these supplies yeah. to, and so pens and paint markers on uh, peachy folders of like yeah. just so you've always kept the sketchbook too right because that's i've you know i didn't start keeping a sketchbook till i went to uh uh east la college uh i was it was always leaflets and i guess that's why maybe i don't have them also my mom threw everything away man yeah <laughs> she was trash she had two boys and she that's was like hilarious she's like oh you know and i'd be like and i'd forget about it and you know maybe years after I'd be like, hey yeah. do i still have all those mm-hmm. magazines that are worth a lot of money ah, dude. No. <laughs> um Let's get into um, how, when you were at ELAC, was there other artists that you know of that also, like, um, continued with their work and, and still continue to do the work today that, that um, you know, because I'm, I want to bring up East LA College specifically because uh, there's other artists that have come here to talk to me that talk about you mm-hmm. being a teacher there and working with them and, and having a lot of influence on their creativity. And I mean, that must be pretty cool, <laughs> you know, to have gone through like ELAG, grown out of it, 
got your uh, bachelor's at Art Center, mm -hmm. and then master's at NYU, mm -hmm. and then you came back to teach so, after a few years. But let's go through all that. How was um, how was ELAC for you, and then how was it coming back? ELAC was great. East LA College and the Vincent Price at the time was the Vincent Price Gallery. Mm -hmm. Little tiny thing. <clears throat> um, shout out to Victor who's been there for since I was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Victor Para. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, you know, listen, man. I I think that being and and I don't know I don't know who I who I was at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Even in, when I was a skater kid, I didn't know who I was. You're just sort of seeing yourself through these things. Um, and I think that the journey of, of being an artist, quote unquote, is, at least for me, is, 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 is trying to better understand where it is that you come from because uh, it was such a severed history mm. of, of where I was from and who I was uh, with, the, with my, my mom. We're, we're, we're from Guadalajara. My, on my mom's side, on my father's side, it's it's, it's sketchy because you know there's it's, they're estranged. But um, it, it, the history is fi finding that out. And East LA College is so available to to have that history. I, I remember hearing uh, Patsy Valdez and Gronk talk at, in '92, maybe you know. And uh, it was an exhibition of one of the many exhibitions that they've had about those those folks uh, that went there. Roscoe went there, right? and um, and knowing and just kn knowing that there's a lineage of of something that you can belong to was very important for me. And uh, and another place that I that I haunted was 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 East LA through. They, they, it's really Monterey Park. It gets East LA colleges in Monterey yeah. Park, but <laughs> East LA is across the street, so. I was often there, and then when I started, uh, when I started uh, uh, going to East LA to transfer, um, yeah, seeing the the uh, the murals in the library, right? Uh, uh, <clears throat> having access to and the gallery, by the way, is is tiny at the time, right? It's not the museum, the four, no, it is not, yeah. the four, you know, three like stories, levels yeah. or three story levels of uh, of museum space that it was. It was very tiny, probably. I would say, I don't know. I might be exaggerating, but 500 square feet connected to the offices of the faculty members. Yeah, <laughs> you know, is, you know, that, we're somewhere in the middle yeah. of the campus. Oh. And they had like uh, um, they had uh, uh, Tim Burton drawings up in yeah. this little space, very low ceilings too. Right? It's like, oh wow, you know, like, that was the old bungalows. Yeah, the old yeah, bungalows. Yeah. But uh, it was cool, man. Yeah, I, I don't I, think any of those buildings are there anymore. I they, think it was haunted, by the way, too. Like I felt, always felt the weird energy in that little space. I was like, uh, what's odd about this? A, a lot of those bungalows were army barracks from mm. World War II, so it's very possible. Mm. Because I did theater there at ELEC, and I learned that because uh, we had a low ceiling, and we were like, why do we have such low ceilings for a theater? And they said, oh, it's because these were army barracks that were donated. Mm, and dude. so, yeah, it's possible that they just carried a lot of energy. Oh, yeah. Trippy. Yeah. And, um, did you ever take art classes there? I took the one um, 2D design or something like that. Uh -huh. It was the only thing I you took. Know, do you remember the instructor? It was some white guy. Yeah. Very tough. You know, the. And it, I, he was good, though. I, I really enjoyed that class. The instructor, uh, and I. I, from seeing some of uh, some of the podcasts with uh, your guests, <clears throat> we w what I like is that I sh we share, you know, m mentors in common mm. at a different generation. And, and mm. mine was the Jim Oyakawa, who's the uh, the instructor. He's uh, of Japanese descent, and Jim, but Jim went through uh, Long Beach State and then went to uh, Claremont mm. uh, for his masters and was teaching there as a young man. But he's somebody who I was like. Uh, I think Manuel took him until he kicked him out or something like that. No. <laughs> or he was like, I think you, you, you no. took his class enough. Oh, oh, I, I you know, there, well, there, there's something there, like that. There's some, so, there's some, uh, 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 there's, there's camps, unfortunately, camps in that art department. And uh, the good camp, <laughs> I'll talk about the good camp, was Jim Oyakawa, didn't like, yeah. They, oh, and, and People also, and we, I went to school during a time when, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Robert Acuna. I know the name. Who, oh, the, he's a writer, yeah. He no, he's he's an abstract painter. I mean, there's oh, probably okay. the writer as well, but the, this one, the one I'm talking about is, is he's an abstract painter who worked under Dave Hickey, and also, um, I think that more people would know is uh, uh, 
Gajin also went oh, yeah. there during that time. Gajin Fujita. Uh, and uh, to name a few, I'm sure there's more that uh, I, maybe I'm not aware of, but there's always, you know, people who sort of advance from, you know, uh, from East LA College that I know about. But we have we share in common back uh, the the having a gym as the generation before us to like also um, to make it accessible mm. and go because I think that there's there's instructors who are are uh, I I find the good instructors to be instructors that aren't afraid to share the information. It's like yeah. hey check this here this is how you do it <laughs> just do it right and that that's that's what the type of person I I, I thought I I you know I wanted to be so. Um, and and f- it's always been fortunate whenever I've I've run into those people and it, and it's been, you know, you don't do anything by yourself, man. You know, like yeah. uh, it's been that way. And but Jim's one of those people who's who's still working there, and uh, uh, I hope he's 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 close to retirement. But uh, who uh, was somebody who just you know made it um, accessible and, and and was a really great experience. And after grad school, I remember he said, "Hey, when you finish your." graduate do you recall me yeah. and i was like called him <laughs> he's like all right so so he's like oh and i would come back from new york city in the summers to visit mm. to just get some sun man just get some fucking <laughs> vitamin d serious man because it, it's you you're you're you know it's it's gotham city it changes you yeah, yeah oh i mean you know like I, I don't have i have none of this color one on that side really yeah wow what a trip it really changes you and and we we would fiend my wife and i would fiend for that yeah. the sun dude just to be like ah oh, right like a lizard but uh he said yeah let me know and uh and he would put me he's like all right let's you're gonna start teaching over here and that's where i started i started teaching at, at nyu uh for an instructor out there but jim's the one that gave me the chops to go mm. go to southgate Right, where they yeah, throw yeah. shit at you. <laughs> uh, stop it! Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the South, the Elac Southgate campus. Yeah, the extended yeah. campus, which yeah. is really. Uh, I, I did one class there. Yeah, oh right, a journalism class. I used to teach drawing there, which was and and the students that I got there was so they were so great, dude. Like, mm. um, we we had to, and you know how it is. It's it's just it, like one bit one building. It felt more like a continuation school. It did. <laughs> So we would share the, the the drawing studio was shared with the like yoga studio or like the, the fitness studio, so we had to bring out all the the, the horses the drawing horses. Oh, okay, good. So when I, I'd get there early, and uh, eventually you start because I taught beginning to advance, and the advance the beginning students become advanced students, right? And they'll yeah. and they knew like my routine, and so they would start and come, and they'd like I'd come like an hour early, and it set up already. <laughs> like, and, and you know, they, I think that they're just really like going like, yeah, let's do this, like let, let let's let's teach, and we'll, you know, mm. and it was it was a good deal. I think w- uh, one of the the assignments that was cool there was I set up a camera, and uh, I had them do a drawing assignment. This is for advance, that they had to erase and redraw, and then they they put it under the camera and take a pic, and so then I stuck all those pics in a inside of the camera, and I just. And we made an animated moving drawing, oh, shit. right? Like uh, not unlike um, a William Kentridge. Are you familiar with William Kentridge? Mm-mm, mm-mm. He does. That's exactly. I mean, I got it from William Kentridge. He does uh, these animations of these erased drawings. But what's cool is that you see the remnants of the erase oh, marks shit. move. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's there are these sort of like epic stories. You're, you're, you're trying to draw the same thing from memory. Um, he he's for for this assignment. It was just. We're gonna draw. Advance is gonna draw the still life. But what I want you to do is I want you to animate one of the geometric shapes. So that okay. sphere needs to bounce into the next, oh, wow. right? That's so it. they would draw, erase, and and then you snip, and then another person would come and snip, right? And they erase, and then, wow. and then the, there's one student I forget his name. It was really good. He made the robot walk. I was like, That's <laughs> sick. That's a, you know, and it was just these are basic principles, yeah. and I, and I, I I guess that's my point is that. You give people some basic principles, and they'll just turn it into, you know, rock music. They'll yeah. turn it into poetry. You know, it's it's, it's you, very cool. Do you have a, a favorite student that you remember from oh, Eli? Yeah. Come on, give there's, somebody. There's <laughs> how can I not how can I not say Elmer because he's uh. uh, Elmer. So, but and, and, you know about Elmer. You know, he says, "Oh, Sergio was my teacher." But listen, man, you don't teach people like Elmer. Like they they you know they make you look good. They come in. Yeah. And, and and Almer was just kind of like you know it's like you, you can give two students 
the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he's the one that's going to, like, turn it into something. Yeah. Wow. And he was always like that, man. It was not uh, – he and another another favorite student, uh, Saul, they uh, – for an advanced painting class, they, they're they like, hey, Turan, can we uh, – we want to paint a mural for our yeah. project for a final. I was like, yeah, how big? It's going to be 30 by 15. <laughs> That's what they did, man. Wow. And so th- we had some weirdo who would come in and try to like, like uh, indoctrinate students. Like he was, he was, you know, he'd come in and try to indoctrinate students and go, Hey, you want to paint a mural for, or you want to do this? And we'll, you know, and so that's what he did. And I, I'd, I'd get annoyed with him. I was like, Hey man, come on, they're working. You got to get out. Yeah. But you know, he, 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 he negotiated with them. And they, they, for a final, they painted a, like a 30-foot mural wow. by, I want to say 30 by 15. I'm, you know, they, you can ask Elmer what it was. But that's wow. the kind of stuff that you would get from the, you know? Like, you can't, there's students who will put forth that, uh, put forth an effort, but then there's students who are just like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's so easy for him. It feels like it, you know? <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, it, it's probably not, but... Um, it all seems to just like flow out of him, not just the art, but the words mm-hmm. about his work, the way he speaks about it. And uh, yeah, he's just a, a super chill guy. Yeah. Um, but there's, you know, when I was teaching at East LA College, there was some great students, man, that uh, went under the wire too, that you really, uh, I really hope that do something. But, you know, uh, are you familiar with Susana Negrete? She's mm-hmm. more of a printmaker. Mm. who's fantastic she's really really good and i think she's done some stuff with she's she's been in like uh i want to say she's been in self-help mm. shows definitely avenue 50 shows um she used to uh print at the studios with me and cerritos um but just sort of a natural carver mm. and also carves like you know linoleum you know that you got the push yeah, carve yeah, yeah you have you seen the ones that look like they look like action figure hands. They're safety ones. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No. So they're safety blades, and they look like this, and you pull. And, and it's carving with those are just ridiculous, man. It's just like, what? It's insane, yeah, it's yeah. It's just, it's like a pull, and it just sort of like tunnels out, and she loves wow. those. I was like, how the hell do you do that? If you have the control, you have the control. Yeah, yeah. 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 But there's, uh, there's a, man, there's 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 so many, and I, I, I don't want to say because I forget the names, but, um that that are just so very talented and they have the angst uh to do something pretty amazing when when i was there uh manuel was was uh had already graduated so he was under i want to say he's under he's under jim yeah but then the other the 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 other the other um camp took over as chair and then the 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 art department became Mm you know not what it was it, it used to be they didn't uh, let you just hang out and well that. nobody was hanging I, I mean i think that there was a comfort with uh, there's techs a lot so i think yeah. jim was the chair at the time and and uh I'll, I'll, i'm gonna try to check b on that <laughs> uh, it, it, uh what it was a very uh productive space so mm. the bungalows remember that that sort of center spot yeah you had the space in the middle so if people would lay house. out tables and and do stuff there and they'd be dripping paint and and uh, and then they, I started to work in the architecture department, helping them establish the um, the, the woodworking. Mm. And so Jim would send students over, and I'd help them to make canvas stretcher bars. Mm. And and so it was just a crossover back and forth, and it was just constant making, man. And mm. then uh, another camp took over, and just and the, the, and and this was during a time where, oh, see, I'm gonna get check B. Uh, they got a new building and the new camp took over and it was just, it just sort of fell short, man. Yeah. It was, it was a bummer, but a lot of fantastic students, uh, you know, Manuel, uh, Susana, as I mentioned, um, uh, uh, Rafa was, Esparza, yeah. was uh, one of Jim's yeah. students and w- was there. Um, and yeah. And again, I, I'm missing a lot of fantastic, yeah. well, talented people. Let's, let's go back into a little bit backwards. Um, how was New York for you? I mean, coming from, you know, East L.A. and heading out to New York. Um, I, you know, I, I've oh, always... Wait, let's go backwards even more. I forgot Art Center. Art Center. Like, Art Center is already, like, it's already a different world. Yeah. Fucking showing up on that campus. I've oh, been yeah. To it, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's how I felt, man. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was... 
it was years ago and it was like something I had never seen a campus like that and I was just mind blown by mm-hmm. it and, you know I didn't get to go there but I got to see it <laughs> yeah you know um it, it was it was great man it's always been uh fantastic and you know at, at art center we went to school with some people uh um, that uh became famous as well and we'll, we'll leave that off for now but uh, art center was fantastic man it, it, and i always tell students who are like you know uh, who, who are planning or they kind of want to go i was like well there, you know, arts. If you go to art school, it's a little more concentrated for the arts, mm-hmm. you know. But you know, if you want to like pick out, if you think that there's somebody here that's talented, take them out, and then you have a room full of them at art school, mm-hmm. right? So basically, you know, you got to up the end, you got to up mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. And you got to bring it. It's like getting to the NFL, <laughs> per- right? pretty much. Everybody's good, everybody's yeah. good, yeah, yeah. you know, and everybody's uh. <laughs> everybody uh, 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 yeah they, they have the they have their sensibility you don't find yourself until maybe like over at art center fourth or fifth term later terms right mm. in the beginning you do foundations like any other place mm. but you f- start to find your voice and um it was odd because well it wasn't odd I, I, you start to find your voice and I, and i think that i've always had the um I, whatever my mom had this this sort of like i gotta get out of here bug mm. the, i've always had that you know like i was never maybe it's the skater thing right like the mm. oh like i'm gonna fucking i used to make my own frames that's mm. uh i had to get scholarship money right i, I wanted to get scholarship money and one of the things that because i had to get there's times where i couldn't pay and they were like you know hey uh, you owe 800 bucks right 800 bucks is now and you know like in the grand scheme of things it's not that much but you're talking about art center. Art you center, them. you can't complete the semester if you don't. And I had no money, dude. I of course, yeah. no way. And uh, they, the, the, and I, and I, I came to the person with. I was like, f- like, like, all right, that's it. Just kick me out, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't do it. This is first semester, and they're like, and they did something on the computer. They're like, they're like, okay, get out. Wow. That's what I said. <laughs> You can do that. <laughs> that's what I yeah. said, and I was just like, like I do. Uh, I'm sure they have a financial hardship button. That's possibly, dude. Yeah. But the, and it's you know, and it's, the school is so fucking expensive, you know, and it costs so yeah, much money. Plenty of money. Yeah. So anyhow, so you know, the at Art Center they have a program where where you know at the end of uh, every academic year, you can um, uh, submit for scholarship. Right, and every academic year you can submit for it. So if you have money, you can get more money. Wow! Right, and so that's what I started to do, and um, that sort of led me to. Yeah, you know, I would make everything from scratch, and I'm still that. I I didn't. I've never liked like working on canvas. Yeah. That store bought canvas, and I don't like even numbers. Yeah. Because yeah, I can see it in the can. I can see it in the canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and it was just so like, oh, it just feels so common. Like you know, like store bought, yeah, like yeah. I, it just bothered. Ikea frames, kind of. Yeah, thing, like you, yeah. you, you know, like you, you, it's the same thing. And um, so I started to spend time in the shop over there. And they have a state. They at the time they had a state of the art shop, and, but I would take a two by four and then just sort of like make a shelf, so that when I I made these moldings that were you know floater frames, nice. right? Yeah. And so I would do that, and then I'd build up. I I use I still work very similarly. Um, although there's, there's more, uh, a care taken on the surface so that it lasts longer. But, um, yeah, it was, I was able to get uh, scholarship through that. And that was like, fuck every, every it was like a show every yeah. year. And you did get a space. They're like, okay, Sergio, you got this, but it was throughout the campus yeah. for the department. So then, um, I was always like sort of used to cutting from scratch man cutting something down you know like taking a, a big sheet of masonite that costed me eight bucks at the time and making you know panels like four or five panels that would cost you hundreds of dollars yeah. in the store <laughs> right but uh you work with what you got always man yeah. and you still do that when you like put little pieces of wood together and all that and paint now if if you had to explain to a, a non-painter or a non-art major your style of painting, like how would you say, and, and how did you evolve from drawing into, you know, painting? Um, well, I think that uh, painting with the experimentation, and here's a, here's right here, if you look here, there's a picture of my image. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the fi- image right here. Uh, uh, 
painting in in high school was always available, right? And so I'd mess with it. Mm. And um, I always, I, I, and in at East LA College, man, like mm. I just was the mark, right? The brush mark, or painting with your brush, right? Mm. That's it's a different feeling than painting with a pencil. It's not better or worse. It's just different. Mm. Um, and with the the brush, there's there's and the with with the wet media, there's a uh, a, a gesture with texture. Mm. And I've always felt um, I, I've always felt like that, that there's an energy there that I really enjoyed. Uh, drawing was always very is very it's still very important, but I think I learned to draw. Uh, the way that represents me later after where I was like, Oh, okay. Right. Um, in, in college, I used drawing as a tool to, to guide what I was going to work on mm. today. I don't use any drawing. I try to guide with the marks mm. so that they're, they're not so in the past. I felt like it was contrived, like, like not contrived. It was, uh, it felt a little bit stale and, and I'd lose something. Mm. Right. So then today I tried not to do that. So I don't, I don't do a drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I was also sort of bringing the tools, the drawing as a tool mm -hmm. rather than a, a mark or a gesture. But to answer your question, Rafa, um, what, what do I work? I, I, I work, uh, um, I would call myself a painter. I feel like I'm, I'm a painter in spirit. And um, the surface of painting uh, is important to the work. Mm. Uh, something that's supposed to be seen in person is important to mm. the work. I deal with uh, figures, um, uh, realistically uh, depicting them. Um, they, my work could be very uh, rendered in one spot and gestured in another spot. So it's like they're mm. juxtaposing something very loose to something very not. And and the reason for that is because. I work on things um, for long periods and not for the sake of working on something long so that I can finish it. I will do something and I put it away. I call it the uh, the compost. I put it in the compost <laughs> and then I bring it, try to bring it back. So I really am a Makes fan. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm a really, really a fan of, of and see the picture? Let, let it marinate like they say. <laughs> yeah, let it marinate or um, uh, I've sanded down Mm. Uh, uh, you know, like layers of paint. Because I'll also spackle paint on a panel, yeah. right? And just sort of like build it up and then hopefully see something or work on it or or use my carving tools or chisel it out. Damn. But I like that that um, challenge of uh, knowing your surface so well, like a, like, a, like a construction worker, you know? Mm -hmm. Knowing your material so well that you're like, oh, I can fix it. <laughs> what do you, you know, like, hey, we want the sink over there. <laughs> All right, you know? and um, And if you can... If you can echo the the activity in the mm. painting, I think that that's a successful painting for me. Mm. So it's it's like, well, here's where he cut, here's the seam, right? And there's there's where he glued it back. You know, like I, I like all that. Mm. Uh, and so the painting for me would best be described as it's realist painting uh, with an emphasis on the the um, physicalness of of gesture and paint. And time is important to the entire composition. So hopefully you're feeling the breath of all of that in the work. And I, I think that, that that happens, you know? Not le leaving some of it like more, like you said, more blurry and some of it more focused. Is that like also like a, a technique to draw focus? Uh, the eye for the viewer? Not necessarily. In the past it wasn't. See, this is some of the, for me, the, the process of, uh, process, process wise, like, Here's my drawing, and then I'm gonna paint inside that thing, and and this is how you're supposed to, and this is how you're supposed to, and and I've, and I've gotten rid of supposed to, <laughs> and and so, I, love it. Uh, I I just think, for me that there's things that I'm like, okay, that's good, and then I'll be like, eh, like uh, it's too academic, you know, like mm. let me, and I'll sand I'll sand into it and make it a little more problematic. Like you literally take a sander to the canvas. I can, yeah. Well, I work on I so I board, yeah, to I work on panel for that panel, reason yeah. too. So so what happens is, I work on a uh, a board, whether it be board or some uh, some kind of board that's gonna not buckle, mm -hmm. and I uh, gesso both sides several times, uh, uh, and I try to get some marks with my gesso brush so that because what happens is if you leave those marks and you paint over the the paint will 
settle flat mm. and those marks show up. So it looks like it's a giant brush, but it was my gesso brush, mm. right? So sometimes I, and if I can see that at the end of the painting, mm. that's nice. Yeah. I like that, right? Because <laughs> you're seeing everything. You're, yeah. you're, but you know, I mean, you might not know. It's like, well, I know. You don't have to know. It's just the idea of going, none, none of the noise is missed. Like, it's all there, right? Like, that's kind of what we're trying to do. But, um, I, I, yeah, I, 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 on a panel that's gessoed, and then I, I, I shellac it. I put a little spray shellac, and then I uh, give it a tone. Like, a, like that paper piece there has that, that nice tone. Somebody, they, they put the little kind of pink in the bottom. I give that a little thin color so that when I paint on, on it very thinly, the light bounces off it and feels like a like a stained glass window. Mm. But then I paint thick thickly next to it and then it really bounces off because it's going all oh, it's contrasting this gesture right here, right? Yeah. Right, so 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 that sort of anyway. A lot of surface there's, things. There's are definitely like I mean there's two different things when you're looking at a painting that's just completely flat and you can barely see the paint strokes. And then something else that has a lot of just like you're saying, the physicality is visible. You could see where they push down and where they swoop sideways mm -hmm. and all that. Both beautiful things. Yes. But extreme opposites sometimes where like something looks like just like a photograph almost. Can I show you something? Um, yeah, but I mean, we're on the podcast. So. No, I, I mean, I'm not, you're not going to. Oh, okay, you brought something. Oh, wow. Yeah, do you want, can you open it? Sure. Just put it closer to the camera. I just happen to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. And, and th what's, what I think what that's sometimes true. people don't get to see is, so, you know, Poplar, and then this is, uh, you could see a year there, yeah. so it's pretty old, and, and this is from, uh, uh, if I did dem demos at ELAC, I do demos of paintings, Right. Yeah, yeah. And I and I was like, what am I? I got to do something with these things. <laughs> and so over time, and then like I said, I spackle or I, I keep that paint. Jesus. Right. And uh, yeah, and then just sort of try to sandwich it. And there's no screws in here, but yeah. the idea of, the, of it being a physical thing is sort of the important yeah. aspect of it. Well, let's let's move on to New York now. What did that do to you? Um, how did that change you? If it did. Oh man, um, New York changed. I, I think. Did you like immediately leave after no. Art Center? No. Uh, oh, after Art Center, I, I I did. I actually applied uh, one the first year, and I didn't get into any of the colleges. Mm. And so I waited a year, and then I applied again. And NYU was one of the places I, I applied twice because I just wanted to be on the East Coast. Mm. Um, and got in, and and was. Uh, yeah, so pretty immediately. I think I worked for a year, you know, at um, at a place, and it was just kind of like, yeah, it was like an interim. It felt that way. I was like, I'm getting the fuck out yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, and then, so you weren't married yet, right? No, yeah, no, 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 no. You met your wife in New York? No, I met my wife at a, at. I, I we, yeah, we went to school together in undergrad. Oh, okay. And uh, I knew her, and then she. Um, she went to school. I, I was in New York for a year, and then she went to school out there. Okay. Um, that she didn't. She changed programs eventually, but um, yeah, we 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 lived up there, and, and and my son was born up up there. She's actually born in in uh, the Bronx. Oh shit! Yeah, and then Emilio's oh. born in in uh, Brooklyn. But uh, yeah, so we got back together. East Coast, West Coast beef in the family. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, pretty pretty close to me. I would say there was a year in between. So, did did New York? I'm sure Art Center changed you a lot because you you know. I mean, you know, you went from one kind of teaching to another kind of level, like yeah. you like you described it. So it had to have changed you and your style and and the way you worked. Did uh, New York do the same to you, or did it just refine? Or I, uh, no, I think New York was a, a very. Um, it, it was. It was sort of the intellectual uh, approach to art making, and I'm not saying my work's intellectual. I'm saying that the way they, they taught it, they yeah. can give a shit about an object sometimes, right? Mm. They're like, so? Like, you can paint. Who cares, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they want to uh, psychoanalyze it. They want, you yeah. know, 
some some sort of uh, meaning they want to uh, intent or how is it connected historically or you yeah. know what does it all mean and so yeah. you know um that's I, a trip <laughs> yeah I, I and and art center was very much about object making this is a design school right mm, yeah like how, this is how we're going to make things like they had machines that'll you know you at the time that'll that'll design some, something carve out. something out for yeah. you it's that high tech or they just had all the people who are like yeah we, we've made this from since the 60s right they designed cars there <laughs> they designed cars there yeah exactly and and uh, uh graphics and packaging but um and so new york's uh, nyu was was very much about the concept and conceptual conceptualism um i don't know how much it's changed now but uh, you know it, it was it was how they looked at the work so in grad school, you, it'd be like uh, you'd meet with an instructor in a, in a painting class, right? Yeah. Painting is just like, yeah. And be like, all right. Uh, it's a class so, about painting. It's a class about painting. And then they'd be like, so, yeah, what do you, you know, like, who are you and what do you want to do? All right. It's like, all right, well, have something by Wednesday. And I'd be like, what? Right? Yeah, you know, like, by Wednesday, you know? So, um, where, you know, you, you were so, like, it, at the previous college where you're making stuff, they understand sort of like... Uh, how, an alchemy of of, mm. of building something right and that takes can take time and yeah. there's a process in in letting things yeah. s, you know like marinate yeah and over here it was like let's all right get it done i'll, I'll see you in, in a day <laughs> i'd be like what are you fucking talking about right are you i mean i never said that but i was just like all right so then that just made something quicker made something smaller uh, it was very much about it's all. I guess everywhere is about space, but over there is is a, it's a vertical city, right? But the space is very limited. My studio was tiny, right? Um, My studio, I was like in a in a corner yeah, yeah. somewhere, <laughs> right? In a space in a corner somewhere, um, uh, and um, it was just uh, all right. So let me take that challenge, and and it was really very much about idea, and I think that that was something that I needed in my work where. They're like, oh, so okay, you, you like to paint like that? Who cares? Well, what's it about, right? Let's talk about that. And so, that, I think that was a really good lesson to um, to pivot on for uh, for the work, mm. you know, where you know, where one way, you know, you and, and it's not, and again, it's not to say that painting. No, you're looking at the same elephant from a different. Absolutely side, right. I mean, it it is part of the process, or but it's it's also part of the the result, I guess, mm -hmm. because the paintings do live, they have a life longer than ours, and so they will have that, that life, the academic life might be something that even lasts longer than, than your physical process. Yeah, uh, um, you know, and that was, in, in the in the classroom, it was very much about that, and you know, you, graduate school challenges you to write uh, a thesis and, 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 and sort of reflect on what it's all about, and then you're, you're taking classes based on theory, which I could, you know, take it or leave it. I'm not very interested in, in you know, you could look at my work theoretically, and people won't, but, and I'm also not interested in making a, a, a theorizing before I actually make the work, that you know? Yeah. And, and going through that, I know that, and going like, oh, fuck that, like, cause I'm just, look, this is, like, my, the, my spirit is a, that of a fucking mechanic, like, I, yeah. I'm gonna build this. Do you, do you plan out a drawing? No. See, that's, that's, what I imagined, because uh, I feel like you just start and like just shit happens. Yeah. And that's why sometimes you add an extra piece of wood yeah. <laughs> or you add like something else sticking out over here. Yeah. And, and um, that's kind of how I start everything that I do. It's kind of like, let's just start it and then let's let's go forward and see what happens. And, yeah. And things will grow and things you will need other attachments. Yeah. Whatever. You know, I, I th it's exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> the exposure to art was what I really was, um, you know, inspired. I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, New York, the city, the culture, right? Yeah. Um, over there, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the uh, exhibitions are on the side of a of a bus. Wow. You know, over there, they're like, oh, yeah. And you can walk, you know, off Broadway to see a show. Uh, uh, you know, I got, I saw, uh, who was it? Uh, you ever hear Top Dog, Underdog? You ever hear that yeah. piece? And so I saw it was Don Cheadle and... Jeffrey yeah, Wright. you saw the first the iteration, first of, that. iteration yeah, of it. Yeah. 
and it was just like here in LA I was like, with most death with most death and it became most death and I was like are you f-? like yeah. right it was like it cost us like I don't know maybe 12 bucks for the ticket or something yeah, yeah. but where over here it's, we're spread out and you got to drive there and yeah. and if you grew up here that you there's a little of uh, um uh, apprehension with like, oh, do I have to go all the way over? Am I a theater person? Oh, you mean to get out there, like to get oh, out? Yeah, I have to go downtown. Right, or it's in or but it's no. gonna be one way streets that I don't know. I, I th- this is I'm life. Nervous. This is life before yeah. moving to New York City. And in New York City, I think that, it, uh, you know, the, the art and conceptually at college, but the culture and going like, go get that. Yeah, yeah. Here it is, right? People on the and mm. you have it here now, but people on the subway going like, check this out. And they're like flipping and dancing, and everybody is yeah. always performing, right? There's or they're like, you know, the break dancers who like close the circle so you can't see yeah, if yeah. you're not gonna pay, right? That's funny. You know that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it, and and it's just sort of like this sort of overlapping of all of these different influences uh, happening all at once. It's also very fast, right? It's like I always. In maybe the fourth year in, I uh, we were living outside of uh, the city about an hour, and I would take the the, the train in to uh, to work, and I'd stop at Penn Station. And Penn Station in in New York City is like returning a kickoff. What do you mean? Oh, oh to football. get through it. To get through it. <laughs> so it'd be like, and then you see, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you just hear the train number fourteen. You know, like that, that's what that's how Shit. how fast paced it is over there. You know, wow. and um, and so it's just something to adapt to, right? When you came over here, it felt like you're in a car. You're like, you know, people are. It's still pretty fast. It's not as fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely is not as fast. I, and I remember going back after I had not lived there anymore, and it, the spots that I knew were already changed. Man, it's yeah. a new business there. And it's a lot more, I guess, physical contact because there's, you're not in cars over there. It, there's, you know, forget, you, you know, you know, over here, it's, you know, someone cuts you off, you're like, oh, what the, f-? you're like, yeah, yeah, what the hell, right? It's all about, you know, I think personal space is a factor here, right? It's like, yeah. it's like when you talk to somebody, you don't talk to them like this, right? You're not like, yeah. hey, man, you know, and over there, like people, will, you know, like you're walking, they'll bump you. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I was there, and being from here, I was just like turning around, like ready to like to fight, right? Like. But nobody's doing anything. It's like just like a it's sea of accidental bump. school of fish. No, they're, it's not accidental. It's just like get out of the fucking way, right? Oh shit! Like, I, I'm, like they don't care. Like it's not. Yeah. I always say like you know like go fuck yourself doesn't mean go like well, I want to fight yeah, knives. Yeah. It just means hey get out of the fucking way. Go ahead, go fuck yourself. Right? <laughs> so, like it just means that. Leave like, me alone. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, just leave it alone. Just get out of the way. Uh, so you de- de- definitely don't don't like you know you don't want to stop. Everything's yeah. moving so quickly. It's like, what are you holding up the line for? We gotta get places. You, know? <laughs> you ever see Billy on the street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that. They're like, Nuts. he's like, and he just goes at him. He's like, get the. Yeah. But uh, it can be um, the culture was the overlapping culture and what you're saying. Going back to what you're saying about how uh, how I start. Yeah, man. The uh, letting it happen. The influence of of reaction, mm. the inspiration of whatever, it may be sound or maybe it is a visual to start with, mm. but uh, allowing it to sort of become something um, and, 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 and really sort of making an object that exists in the world is what I kind of, I hope for. Whether people are like it or not, that remains to be seen, but yeah. I, I like it's that. It's not why you do it. Right. Yeah. But I like the um, the idea of, of image making and the way I work, which is, I always, I always relate it to, 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 uh, uh, like I, it's like, I play the guitar, right? I, not, I don't really, I don't know how, <laughs> but I play the guitar and I, this is what I play, right? It's like music I'm putting forth, right? Mm-hmm. A composition. That's what I do. Right. I really like messing with the guitar and I like the different variations and being influenced by classical or being influenced by contemporary or jazz and, and all of those things sort of overlap, and I feel like that's how I work when mm. I when I paint. Is that's that's what it, it's not supposed to be anything. You know, some could, of the, some of the skater in you comes out, and then some of the fine art comes out over yeah. here, and some of it's just yeah your whole life thrown in there. And some of it might, and and the piece might completely fail, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like like oh this one's like why is that one still there after so yeah. many years, right? <laughs> Right? It's like it's because that one sucks. Yeah, yeah. That's crap. Uh, no, you just haven't. Uh, the word that I learned is you haven't resolved it yet. It, it, correct, and but yeah. resolving it could mean 
completely throwing it away. <laughs> no, z- or no, painting over no, it. No, because it's on pa- the, the material is always usable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's, you valuable. Always, it's, it's always valuable. reused. So that's the compost. But the image could change. And I have two pieces. Yeah. I have one that's from '99. Wow. That I recently took out, and I never liked it. And I did sand it down, and it still has r- remnants of paint from nice. 1999, right? Nice. And it's, but it's not on the same type of like the the formula for how I make a because it's just a it's a box. Yeah, yeah. Very simple principle, right? And then like what I just showed you, it's a box, and on top of that, I work, and you make a composition, and so the box isn't right, so it's different. So I'm a little like, hmm, you know, this 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 board is not, you know, <laughs> it's it's yellowing. It's probably gonna split, you know, but. It's still pretty cool, like to work yeah. on split board. That's, you know. Yeah, I mean, decaying. you aged it yourself too. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, what do you think New York did for your artwork, NYU, and specifically? Uh, I I think that New York. Um, uh, I don't know that it what it did exactly. I I, w- I wouldn't say what it did for my artwork. I'd say it, what it did for me as a as an artist. Or as a person, really, is it? Um, I think it challenged uh, challenged my comfort levels because mm. outside of uh, that, I, I you know I grew up, you know, in you know mm. the, the Beverly Hills of East LA, mm. <laughs> and I was uh, you know you know you, you know you can live and die without ever having to learn English sometimes mm. in in in. In our, in our neighborhoods, in yeah. our neighborhoods, right, and that's a good thing for us. But you could also you realize that you know the world is just a little box, but it's not. Yeah. It's so you know it's so much more, and I, and I think that um, it's a good question, man. I, I I I you know the I think the superficial answer to that is that it allowed me to intellectualize my work. It allowed me not to make it so such a precious thing. Uh, uh, my work, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because you're also just, there's just so many people that it's inundated with, with, with artists, right? You, you can pick up a rock and throw it outside and you're going to hit an artist <laughs> in New York City, right? Yeah. And, and, and so um, it, I, I think that uh, on a superficial level, that's, that's the answer to that. Mm. But uh, I have another friend who's from Los Angeles. Uh, his name is Luis uh, Serrano and, and Luis was living uh, out there for a stint and he's a generation older than I am and he was out there and we'd get together every now and again right it's like oh and we'd meet at the at the Met and we'd go look at a show where we'd meet somewhere right that's the other you know I mean we could do that oh, here yeah. too but you know it's, I don't know it's like we're outside of our normal culture but we got to talking about it. he's like I think I, I have the answer he's like he's like New York City gives you a ton he's like it'll give you like 10 years worth of of, of mm. knowledge and, and feeling but if you're here long enough, it'll take back twice as much. Wow. And so he's like, uh, and, and he was like, uh, and I, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember it was a while back. But he's like, some of the most beautiful people live here. You see it on the street. Some of the scariest looking ugly people live here as well. And, and, uh, and I really understood that. Like it really, there was times where you, wa- you walk a ton, right? I, that I was so exhausted, man. I, I, I just wanted to lay on the floor <laughs> in the subway and go to sleep. Like that's how like it was, but I but, but you know I think the coming from the way I was raised it was like I I was there to to do this I was there to learn or to get whatever I was getting from there, and um, at this time I was in between I was ready to come back and I was just like I was already sort of like cashing in my chips and going oh, fuck this place right I'm ready to go and I was just it was exhaustion because the level the pace of go, you know because you work for little you know for little. To, to, to pay in a really expensive ass fucking you know apartment that's very small to try to make a little bit of work to try to you know it's just a grind man yeah. it's a grind there's it's everything's so expensive and and I'm and and I I, I wouldn't have left man if I if Emilio wasn't born yeah. and we wanted to raise him next to the plants that he mm. are in him um, we we I would have stayed there man I I really thought I was anchoring. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that the the ass kicking it gave me made me f- uh, a little more durable, mm. um, a little more uh, resilient in my uh, career mm. because you know being an artist is yeah yeah of right? course yeah 
So um, I think, it, yeah, I think that that's what it is. But anywhere that you, if you move, I, I, I believe that if you move away and you live in a place and you, you the place gives you something, right? Yeah. Right. Um, if you have the, the opportunity to, to live there, I think it's going to teach you something. And and uh, I, I'm a bit big advocate of, of uh, doing that because get outside of that shoebox, yeah. you know, and uh, and find, you know, and, and find yourself filtered through a different way of seeing things. I think it's going to just make you better. I hope that I can still do that at this age, man. It's yeah. tougher with family and with with yeah. work and, and uh, things that you establish. I, I, and, and just to get try to get it back to your is when I came back from New York, man, um, it was a, a, a pain in the ass to try to get back into the groove of things LA life. and L.A. life because I was so out of touch. Damn. I think I'm still sort of feeling a little bit of, of that yeah, you know it's it's you know because it's such a different scene and I had a you know I had a community there and yeah. you know and and uh, and so I was seven years over there during a time where you put seven years in here and and I was just like oh fuck like this and I was bummed dude quite honestly man I was I was like <laughs> it was like a break it was a bad breakup to to mm. to leave the city mm. but I, I don't regret it yeah, I don't yeah. regret it and and if I could if I had all the money in the world. And I've been asked this question. If I had all the money in the world and I could move anywhere and live anywhere, it wouldn't be there because I've done, been there, done that. It would have to be at another place where I think I can. Paris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> no, that, I, I don't know. Something like that's great. Um, I just want to say real quick, um, I want to mention that you are, also, you are now at Cerritos mm -hmm. and you're working there. Um, if you want to say something about Cerritos real quick, so that we can get to the final question. The final question, which, <laughs> which has been haunting me. Right? Ah. The final question, right? The final question that we all, that you all, click on at the end of some of the podcasts. You're like, what did he say? <laughs> right? Let's find out what it is. I was going to ask you if I could. Can we start the final question in the beginning? That way, they don't know where to find it. and They'd have to see the That's whole thing. Funny. Or in the middle. <laughs> um, Cerritos College is actually a really good. What's your title there? Uh, I'm the uh, well, I'm a associate professor at the moment, but uh, I'm the head of printmaking. So I run the the printmaking studio uh, there, and I teach drawing and two dimensional design. And um, I work with a really great group of uh, faculty who care about um, imparting uh, uh, the knowledge that they have in the profession that they've studied. Um, there's a fantastic uh, exhibition space with a uh, current director who who puts in extra work like a like a regular director he's a faculty member he's a mm. full-time faculty member but he puts in extra time like a gallery director to to give to put a to put forth a very equitable calendar Ooh. of artists nice. um, and opportunity uh, and um, and, the, and then the head of painting and the head of uh, um, the head of painting also is a Hagop Nigerian Who's uh who's been there for for a while now? He's our he's kind of like our he's the the senior faculty member of uh, of our group that you know like uh, he's he kn he knows the system. But whenever we hire people, I think that we all we are all very sincere about the input. We work well together. You know, I'm knock on wood and all this because not every place runs that way, and and, and the the dynamic can change. But I think that the students our sister school is not Long Beach State, but a lot of our students go to Long Beach State, yeah. like Elmer, and a lot of people are, a lot of great fucking students coming out of that place. But a lot of our students go from, from Cerritos to Long Beach that are related to the way I work, which is uh, either in painting or sculpture or ceramics, and um, do well. But I, I think that uh, Cerritos really leaves a mark on them. They come mm. back or they inform us on what they're doing or, you know, somehow yeah. we... I've, you know, I think it's the people. I, I mean, if you have a good relationship with the professor or yeah. you know whoever the staff is, you want to go back and say, "Hey, you know, this is what I did. This mm -hmm. is what I, you know." Yeah, this man. Is what I'm doing. Yeah, it, but it's also and it's like the lineage that I was talking about, right? So yeah. Like the, the whenever there's a, I think I, I don't think that being um, imparting information and being and being uh, giving with with information uh, what you know is lost. On any of our young, young people, 
Yeah, that's what we remember the most. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm not that I'm one of the young people because no. I'm older <laughs> than you. But, <laughs> but we, I think we're, we're, I think we're fan of, of fans of similar younger generational artists who are coming yeah. up and, and, and going and tearing it up, man. And just yeah, going, it's, wow. it's so exciting to see. It's exciting to see. It really is. So um, let's uh, shout out your website and your Instagram real quick. Uh, my website is uh, my, my Instagram is uh, uh, Sergio Teran Arts, and uh, I link in bio. L- link, <laughs> link in bio. Uh, <laughs> you can see it right here. Link in bio. <laughs> because you have a long Squarespace website. I have a Squarespace. Cool. You know, I, I'm trying to get it all together so that it, it functions better. But I, uh, you can just Google Sergio Teran. Yeah. Uh, Squarespace is where it's at. I used to have a Sergio Teran. Um, dot com but i've since it's it's old so yeah. i got rid of it and i tried to putting it on i'm uh into the square space and but you can just you can google i'm definitely on instagram sergio Turan arts and uh yeah i'm constantly posting so be you know if you follow be sure you want content because there's it's just gonna <laughs> it's gonna upload like 15 right when you oh that's not helping uh anyway here's that's an example good. right here can you see it? <laughs> well if if a being from another planet or a spirit came into your space and looked at you and was amazed at everything that you do and everything that you've done, and you only had one sentence to answer, and they looked at you and they said, Sergio Turan, how do you do it? You know how hard this question is, right? Because it- <laughs> this question is so hard it gets harder with every person that comes on. It's, it's improv. Just let the first words come oh, out. Man. How do you do it? Um, and, and I had, damn it. You know what? I'm trying to remember the things that I, I was like, oh, that's a good thing to say. But then they're, they're, they're like gone right now. They're not even That's showing. good. I'm glad they're gone. Uh, how, how do I. Ready? One, two, three. How Sergio do I do, Turan, How do I do what? How do you do it? <laughs> the alien that I was like, um, how do I do it? I, uh, um, you know, I, I, I. I work every day. I do something every day. That's beautiful. <laughs> I work every day. Yeah. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much, Sergio. I appreciate it. Thanks, your time. Rafa, man. And uh, we'll see appreciate you guys next week. <laughs>